Hey everyone, today we're talking about the neglected discipline of fasting. Welcome to The Pursuit, a podcast of Cross Point City Church, where we take a deeper dive into the scripture from last week's sermon. My name's Mike Anthony, and I'm here with our lead pastor, James Griffin. Uh, Now, James, we're continuing on in our series, To Know the King, where we're kind of really diving deep into some areas of spiritual discipline that help us know God better and more. Right. Right. So the week before, we talked about prayer, and I almost feel like this... You know, this week we're talking about fasting. It's almost like an extension it is, yeah. of prayer because a lot of times when we talk about prayer, we're talking about prayer and fasting together because right. prayer is a primary component of fasting. Right. Right. So we talked about prayer already, but we're going to really focus on fasting yeah. uh, this week. So let's um, let's get the Cliff Notes version, we'll okay. get everybody on the same page, yeah. and then um, we've got some, um, I think we've got some fun stuff to talk about. Yeah, love it. Then. Well, ready to go, man. I, you know, I think there's a lot of value in what you said. I, I think prayer and fasting are like two pedals on a bike. Yeah. And so they do work together. And, um, and I'm excited about this season to see how they work together in the life of our church. Mm-hmm. But as you said, this weekend was all about fasting. And so I kicked off the sermon by talking about the primary purpose of fasting, which is mourning and longing, mm-hmm. mourning and longing. And And Jesus, we see him establishing this in Matthew chapter 9, where he calls the disciple Matthew to be one of his 12 disciples, this heathen tax collector, right? Mm -hmm. And he goes to Matthew's house. He feasts with all of these other tax collectors and sinners, really bothers the religious leaders of his day that Jesus would eat with people like that. And so some of the disciples of John the Baptist come to Jesus and they ask the question, hey, Jesus, why aren't your disciples fasting? Okay, we fast and the Pharisees fast. And so why don't your disciples fast? And Jesus makes this connection between fasting and mourning. Mm-hmm. Hey, would the would the wedding guests ever fast or mourn when the bridegroom is with them? And, and yeah. Jesus obviously is using language there that we see all throughout the Bible about brides and bridegrooms. Mm-hmm. Um, Christ is the bridegroom, we the church, we are the bride of Christ. And he's making the point there that his disciples didn't need to fast because he was with them. Right. Like nobody, I made the joke yesterday, nobody goes to the wedding to mourn or grieve except the crazy ex, you know? Yeah. Everybody. So the guy's being forced down the aisle with the dad with the shotgun, right? (laughs) That's exactly right. (laughs) That's it, man. But but the truth is we go to party, well, we go to weddings to party and to rejoice and to celebrate. And, uh, And Jesus says to the disciples of John the Baptist, there will come a time when I, the bridegroom, will be taken away, and Mm -hmm. then they'll fast. And he's talking about this time period that you and I are living in. It's the already not yet, Mm -hmm. and there's a great tension uh, of living right now because we're living between what Christ has already done to save sinners and what he hasn't yet done in accomplishing the work of salvation. That's cosmic redemption. It is when Christ returns to set all things right in his world. But the truth is right now things aren't right. The world is broken. The world is full of brokenness and broken people. And so the primary purpose of fasting is to mourn over that, is to grieve over that, to express sorrow over that. And then there's also this longing component of of us saying to God, we want you to come and to do something about this. I uh, I used a a word over the weekend, lament. Mm -hmm. And it's a biblical word. It was actually in the devotional yesterday for Mm -hmm. our 21 days of prayer. And... um, I just think it's it's something that is lost on many church people, this idea of lament, yeah. which means to express grief and sorrow. I came across this great quote from a guy named Christopher Wright. Uh, it's a book called The God I Don't Understand. And he says, the language of lament is seriously neglected in the church. Many Christians seem to feel that somehow it can't be right to complain to God in the context of corporate worship when we should all feel happy. Yeah. There's an implicit pressure to stifle our real feelings because we're urged by pious merchants of emotional denial that we ought to have faith as if the moaning psalmist didn't. So we end up giving external voice to pretended emotions we do not really feel while hiding the real emotions we're struggling with deep inside. Going to worship can become an exercise in pretense and concealment 
neither of which can possibly be conducive for a real encounter with God. So in reaction to some appalling disaster or tragedy, rather than cry out our true feelings to God, we prefer other ways of responding to it. Man, why don't you tell us how you really feel? Man, <laughs> if, That's if, good. if that doesn't describe a lot of church people, I don't know what does. Yeah. I mean, we both grew up in church for the 100%. most part. And man, I've seen so many church people over the years show up and they just act like everything's fine when everything's not fine. Yeah, you gotta have the joy of the Lord. Right? And so th <laughs> there are times where we just gotta be honest about that. Yeah. It is okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, it's not that we're supposed to Eeyore our way through life, if you will, <laughs> as Christians. You know, we, we know that part of the fruit of the spirit is joy. Yes. So we are to be joy-filled people, but I would argue you can't really know joy without sadness. Mm -hmm. You can't truly experience the joy of the Lord without recognizing that things aren't right in the world. Yeah. And fasting is the way that we express it. The primary purpose, again, is mourning. I'm going to grieve over what's broken in, in the world in which I live, in my own life, and I'm going to long for God to show up and to do something about it. Yeah. And so that is the beauty of this great gift. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started. And then we turned our attention to a lot of secondary purposes, and I'm not going to take too much time on these. If you want to know more about them, just listen to the sermon if you missed it. Yeah. But I gave six of them uh, to receive nourishment, and we talked about how only God can nourish the human soul. Worldly things can't do it. Temporary things can't do it. You can make good things, God things, but they're not going to do anything for you. Only yeah. God can do that for you. Uh, we do it to declare freedom, that we will not be slaves to our desires. Yeah that the appetites that live inside of us aren't gonna control us, but that Christ and Christ alone will control us. Number three was to promote transformation. And I unpacked this idea of sanctification. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that on the podcast here in a few minutes, but, but fasting aids in our growth and maturity as believers in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a way that we open up our lives to the spirit so that he can come in and make us more like Jesus. Uh, number four, to make kingdom decisions. Yeah. And so I explained how, how fasting increases our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And so when we're trying to make big decisions in life that impact the kingdom of God, fasting can give us the clarity that we need on making those decisions. And then the last two, to resist the enemy. This is what we see with Jesus in the wilderness, that, that fasting empowers us to resist Satan. Mm -hmm. That when we fast, we're inviting the Holy Spirit of God to come in and to strengthen us so that we can resist. And when we resist the devil, the good news is he flees from us. And then finally, we fast to experience breakthrough. And uh, I went Mark 9 here and just talked about how certain kinds, if you will, and I, and I really talked about demonic uh, oppression, mm -hmm. how certain kinds can only be driven out through prayer and fasting. Yeah. You know, there are things that we all experience in life at times, and, and we know we need a change. We need a breakthrough. And we're trying to do everything we can in our power and strength to make it happen and not every breakthrough works like that. Yeah. Like some breakthroughs are so spiritual in nature mm -hmm. um, that the only way to see it come about is by prayer and fasting. So again, if you wanna know more about that, just go watch the sermon. But I, I ended by just giving some practical advice and I wanted to do that again because I just think this is helpful for people. It's important. It is. Yeah. Uh, I would say if you're a beginner to fasting, if you're new, just go slow. <laughs> <laughs> Go slow, okay? Uh, you don't have to jump into the deep end of the pool day one. Yeah. You know, if you've never done this before, it's not like complete fast or bust. Yes. It's okay just to like, okay, I'm going to take soda out for a few days. Then I'm going to take caffeine away. And maybe I'm not going to eat breakfast. And I'm going to spend that time in prayer and in the word. And yeah. it is okay to ease in, okay? Yeah. I, uh, I said, secondly, remember, this is going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. Mm -hmm. And it will be because we have all conditioned our bodies to want food at certain times. And when you start denying your body food, it's gonna be screaming at you. We're not good at going without. We're not, man. <laughs> and, and I think that applies to lots of areas of yeah, life. Yeah, 100%. Not just food. Yeah. And then finally, I just say, remember the why. You know, over the course of these 21 days, especially when it gets challenging, just remember why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. That we're fasting to mourn, we're fasting to long, and when we seek God in this way, he rewards us by giving himself to us. And, and so just be motivated by the purpose. So um, again, if you missed the sermon, go back and listen. Yeah. Uh, go back and watch. I think it's gonna be really helpful for you if you missed it as you navigate the next three weeks. And, and, uh, and I pray God uses it in your life. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's talk about, um, well, as we were getting ready for this episode, yeah. you know, thinking through the sermon and 
I mean, I've, I've said this to you before, it's really irritating how thorough you can be sometimes because it makes it really <laughs> difficult to figure out what to talk about. Uh, I'll try uh, to do better, Mike. <laughs> yeah, be less thorough. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I thought it would be, I thought it'd be helpful for the people either listening to the podcast or have listened to the sermon or they've listened to both to kind of come at this same information, but maybe at a different angle because okay. there still might be some misconceptions, yeah. some misunderstandings around fasting. Yeah. Uh, and you know some that I've had myself, so I started making a list of what I thought some misconceptions would be, and I was yeah. like, well, I mean, this is what I think, but, right. <laughs> you know, this might not be what anybody else thinks. So I just went on and Googled misconceptions, right, and found oh, a couple that. of articles and found out, okay, I'm not, I'm not way, <laughs> way out in left field. Some people are sharing the same misunderstanding. Mike Anthony is not the only one. <laughs> yeah. um, so I thought it would be fun to just, I'm going to lob some of these up, okay, and like let's just act like, hey, so this is one of my misconceptions. Okay. Help me think about okay. this. Love that. All right, so first one. Yep. God will owe me if I fast. Okay. God will be in my debt if yeah. I fast. Yeah. Yeah, the first thing that comes to my mind, and I've preached this many times, yeah. God doesn't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't. And the truth is, if we really got what God owed us, it would be death and hell forever. Right. So none of us really want what we are owed by God. Yes. I, I talked about this when I preached on prayer last week and how we are all in debt to God mm -hmm. because we're all sinners. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so we now owe him a payment. He, he, we, and, and it's a payment again that we cannot make on our own. Mm -hmm. And this is the good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ made that payment so that we could be released, forgiven, set free. And, uh, and this is what the gospel reminds us of, that because of what Christ has done, we no longer owe God. Yeah. And God no longer owes us mm -hmm. death and hell because Christ experienced that on our behalf. Yeah. And so I, I think, again, to the person who would go, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this to work God into my debt <laughs> so that God will get some things done for me. He owes me a few favors. <laughs> yeah. So you got to be really careful. Yeah. And, and again, you got to check your heart. And you need to remember the motivation, or I'm sorry, the reward of fasting. The reward of fasting is him. Mm -hmm. You get him. Yeah. This is not about you working God into some payment plan so that he can start doing some things for you that you want. No, this is about you longing for the power and presence of God so that you can experience him more fully in your life. Yeah. And that's a, a, a gift of grace. Like God doesn't owe you himself. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that God would give himself to you, can we just stop and think about how unbelievable that is? Yeah. That the sovereign God of the universe would offer himself to a bunch of sinners and that he would take it upon himself to make the way through the sacrificial death of his son to make that possible? Mm -hmm. That's insanity. Yeah. God doesn't owe you anything. And so just be grateful for what he's given you. It's way more than you deserve. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right, next one. Okay. Fasting is only about denying myself something for a period of time. Yeah. So this is the idea of like, okay, I'm going to fast. I'm going right. to give this thing up, Yeah. but I'm going to do nothing else. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to give that thing up. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, man. And this is tricky. And this is where I think we have to be really careful. It's funny, after church yesterday, I was, I was talking to a friend in our church and um, he was talking about how the sermon really helped him because he's an intermittent fasting guy. Yeah. And he's like, I already only eat one meal a day. He does so it all the time. He does it all the time. It's like <laughs> he's already denying himself food most hours of the day. But what he said is that for spiritual purposes piece mm -hmm. of the definition. That's what he needed to hear. Yeah. Because he just needed clarity. Again, that this is not about simply denying myself food. It's about abstaining from food for spiritual purposes, which is the definition that I gave. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm denying me, not for the sake of me, but for the sake of seeing God show up and do something in my life. Yeah. And so I, I would say in response, you have to remember that fasting doesn't center on you, it centers on God. Mm -hmm. You are not the motivation. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I know different people have probably done this over the years. Like, I'm just going to deny myself to show myself that I can. Or I'm going to deny myself this thing so that I can, you know, brag about how disciplined I am. And if that's what you're doing, you're missing the point of this. Yes. Uh, this is about you denying yourself so that you can repurpose that time mm -hmm. and energy and effort to pursue God more desperately yeah. so that at the end, as I said a moment ago, you, you get more of him. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say, again, fasting centers on God, not on you. 
So you just need to check your heart again and ask the question, why, why am I doing this? Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is probably one of the ones I've seen the most. Okay. Where most, most people are treating it like a diet plan. Right. right. <laughs> and, you know, there is if fasting is a legitimate thing. Like it if is. If you're fasting for health purposes or whatever, then absolutely go do that. Yep. It's awesome. Like you're an intermittent fasting guy. Right. Uh, but I've seen a lot of people, um, and, you know, even myself have made this mistake. We're going to get into these stories in a little bit. It's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. But um, made it more about the denying of myself yeah. than I did about replacing that yeah. with reading the word, yeah. prayer, correct, like digging into these things, study of God's word, all of these things. When I was hungry, I just was hungry. Right, right, right. And you weren't really doing anything with it, right? It wasn't super productive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I see that a lot where, oh, okay, fast, that means I can't eat for a while. Yeah. And then that's the only thing they do. And then they get to the end of it and, you know, sadly be like, well, I mean, I didn't really get anything out of that. Right, right. Well, and you didn't get anything out of it because you weren't, pursuing yeah. the spiritual things that we that's were, right it was designed to do yeah i'll say this before we go to the next one like if if you're thinking about the next three weeks and and your goal is like oh man maybe i get 21 pounds lighter by doing this <laughs> like if that's the mindset going Pound in, a day yeah you're you're missing it it's not about that mike i love what you said it's i'm 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 a, i'm denying myself abstaining from food and repurposing mm -hmm. the time that i would spend on that to pursue the Lord. Yeah. And if that's not the aim, then then you're missing the goal and the purpose of fasting. Yeah. It is for spiritual purposes. So yeah. All right, next one. Okay. <clears throat> uh, fasting is required. So I'll add it to the checklist. Yeah. This is the here's my list of spiritual things that I am required to do. I'm doing out of duty and obligation. Yeah. So all right. I'll add it to the list and I'll Yep. I'll do it. Yep. Yeah, I think this goes back to what I talked about over the weekend, just the misconception concerning the spiritual disciplines. Mm -hmm. And and just to be clear, when I say spiritual disciplines, I mean Bible reading. I mean prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean fasting, church attendance. Um, we're talking giving and serving. The list goes on and on. There are all these spiritual disciplines that we engage in. And I know growing up in church, man, I was the guy who believed for the longest time, well, I need to do those because that's what good Christians do. Yep. Good Christians read their Bible and good Christians pray mm -hmm. and good Christians serve in ministry and good Christians give their money. And so at the end of the day, again, the motivation was me. Yeah. I was trying to make myself feel better about what I was doing. I, I wanted to know at the end of the day that I had done the right things. It was almost like I was looking for... Uh, a pat on the back from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> Thanks so much for, for doing what you did today. Getting an attaboy. <laughs> yeah. And so I think there's this massive misconception that these are just religious behaviors that we perform to keep God pleased and appeased and off of our back, when in reality, that's not it at all. Mm -hmm. um, the spiritual disciplines are the means by which God has given us to engage in a personal relationship with him. Yeah. And so I was thinking about it even, even yesterday, uh, and I may go back and change some of the titles of the sermons that I'm preaching in this series because I've just titled them Prayer, Fasting, <laughs> Worship, The Word. But if you think about it, prayer is how we speak to King Jesus. Mm -hmm. Fasting is how we long for King Jesus. Yeah. Worship is how we honor King Jesus. And then The Word, which we'll talk about in a couple weeks, how we hear from King Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so why do we engage in these disciplines? For those reasons. Yeah so that we can speak to him and long for him and honor him and hear from him. And here's the beauty. As we do these things, we are opening up our lives to the Holy Spirit so that he can come in and transform us mm -hmm. and make us more like Christ. I talked about sanctification in this sermon and, and how sanctification is that lifelong process of transformation. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit closing the gap between our position and practice. Mm -hmm. How right now in the sight of God, if we know Christ, we are holy, blameless, righteous, perfect in every way. Practically, we're a bunch of sinners, man, <laughs> right? Yeah. We're, we're broken, we fail every day, we mm -hmm. fall short every day. And so in sanctification, the Holy Spirit is trying to align who we are in the sight of God with how we live on a daily basis. Yeah. That is the process. And the means by which he does that are the spiritual disciplines. Mm -hmm. And so if you're just adding fasting or anything else, you know, sure, yeah. Bible reading prayer, if you're just adding it to the checklist, 
then again, you're going to get nothing from it. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to be frustrated on the other side of it because you're going to fast and pray and read your Bible and come to church and you're still going to be wondering, have I done enough? Yeah. And is God pleased and is God happy? And it's just not about that. Yeah. On the other side of it, the question you should be asking is this, does my life look more like Christ? Mm-hmm. Um, have I been transformed? Have I grown in maturity? Do I desire to know God more? Because this really is what the disciplines are all about. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, you know, the caveat to the checklist, because I'm a big checklist guy. Yeah. I love checklists. Yeah. That's how I organize stuff. So to all the checklist people out there <laughs> listening right now, don't think checklists exclusively are bad. <laughs> right? It's more like the heart and emotive behind That's that checklist. Exactly right. So if like you're using a checklist to keep yourself organized and plan yeah. your week out and all that stuff, knock yourself out. Do right, a checklist. Right. Uh, but I, And I think what you're getting at is kind of that heart yep. behind why we're doing those things. That's it. Uh, and I think something that was helpful for me, uh, advice I received a long time ago, was to change some of my language. Mm. To so I would talk about you know and specifically like in ministry, like okay, I have to yeah preach on Sunday, right? right I right. have to do these. I have to do this X, Y, and Z. I have to. Yeah. Uh, I was challenged by a guy that was discipling me. He's like, hey, I would challenge you to change your language to I get to. Mm, that's good. So yep. we don't have to pray and fast. We don't have to read our Bible. We don't yeah. have to worship. We get to do That's those right. things. That's right. So for the believer in Christ, this is a privilege to participate in this stuff. Right, right. Uh, and for the unbeliever that can't yet, you know, the privilege for them is they get invited into this through repentance and faith in Jesus yeah. Christ. That's right. And when we start shifting our perspective to say, oh, I guess I'll get my Bible out because James said I have to read my <laughs> That's right. Bible. That's right. yep. It's like the the level of access yeah. that we have mm-hmm. to these things is unbelievable. Right. You know, and you talk to people in third world countries where, you know, they may not even have the word of God in their language yet. Yep. Yep. Where we've what, however many devices you can see right now. So as you're listening to the, whether you're in your car or you're yep. in your office, you're at home or something like that, you've probably got a computer, you've got a phone, there may be an iPad or some sort of tablet, there may be a Kindle. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, there may be physical copies and one in every room of your house, we have unfettered access. Yep. We get right. to do these That's things. That's exactly right. And when we shift our perspective to that, even if you're using the checklist, yeah, yeah, right, right. it starts to become a privilege Changes and exciting everything. to it do does. these things. You know, I shared this with our staff this past week. Um, something you said sparked this, but there are over 7,400 unreached people groups mm-hmm. on the planet today. 42% of the world's population, 3.3 billion people who have little to no access yeah. to Christianity, the gospel, the scriptures. And if you think about the access to your point that we have been given, we should be so grateful for that. And I believe we should not only take advantage of that for our own you know, spiritual purposes to grow, to know God more, um, but we should be hungry to get that to other people. But I think this is the problem with excess. Mm-hmm. When we have excess, it just becomes familiar and we get complacent and yep. we start to assume, well, it's like this for everybody and we just don't care like we need to care. Um, A.W. Tozer said it that, that the most important thing about us is what, what uh, enters our mind when we think about God. Yeah. And I think some of us have way too small a view of God, which mm-hmm. is why we neglect disciplines like this. Yeah. It's like we don't pursue God through fasting and prayer and Bible reading because we just don't see it as all that important because we don't see God as all that important. Yeah. But if we truly understood who he is and what he has invited us into, I believe to your point, that would change the motivation of our heart and we would be hungry, yeah. hungry to pursue him in these ways. Yeah. It made me think, it makes me think of uh, our kids. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you think about our children right now and, you know, we're, we're always like every three months, we're like, we got to get rid of some of these toys. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, same in my uh, house, man. And then, you know, we do actually, you know, you know, periodically, at least a couple of times a year, we're at least yeah. packing some of them up and putting them in a tote in the garage because right, right. they're just everywhere. Yep. Right. And then, you know, our kids are like, I don't, I'm bored. I don't have anything to do. And it's like, <laughs> well, you got three rooms full of toys. Yeah. How are you bored? Right. But then you, you go on some of these mission trips Yep. and you... You know, you know, they'll come with us like soccer balls or stuffed animals or suckers. Right. Right. Yep. And you go up to these groups of kids and you hand them this thing that is yeah. nothing right. 
to us, and you think you would think that you, they just won the lottery. Yeah, when they get that thing, and we do that same thing. I think with our access, we mm-hmm. have so much access to it that it's almost detrimental. Yeah, because we have a tendency to just take it for granted. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, so getting mm-hmm. that, like getting that perspective and that viewpoint back when we're approaching these things, yep. I think is key. And just and you know, as we're praying, you know, maybe that's part of your prayer and your fast this next 21 days. That's like, it. Lord, rekindle. Yeah, my love and my desire. Yep, for the things of God. That's it. All right, I think we belabored that one. Yes, we can go ahead I and think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next one. <laughs> um, okay, next misconception. All right, God is more likely yeah. to give me what I want if yeah. I fast. Yeah, love that. This is a big one too. It it is, man. Yeah. And you know, it kind of makes me think about the first question a bit that God owes me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think these kind of go hand in in, in hand, but I, I see a couple differences here. You know, the first thought that came to my mind is this: God knows what we need better than we do. Mm-hmm. And I, I know at times it's really easy to get frustrated that God is not giving you what you want because you think you really, really need that thing. <laughs> Look, Lord, and I really know what I need. So if exactly, you just give it to me, that'd be great. Right. We're so ridiculous <laughs> at times. Uh, but but the truth is we can, I think, use stuff like fasting mm-hmm. or the other disciplines to go, okay, well, maybe if I do enough of this, yeah. I'll convince God to give me what I want. But the truth is he knows what we need better than we do. Uh, a few years ago, my middle daughter, Selah, she wanted a hoverboard for, it was either birthday or Christmas. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> well, here's the deal. My my middle daughter, Sayla, is the clumsiest kid on the planet. <laughs> and so when she asked for the hoverboard, Amber and I immediately knew, no way we're buying that, yes. man. And and she was super disappointed that we told her, no, we're not going to buy a hoverboard for you right You're now. break your neck. But that was the truth. It's like yeah. if we get her this gift, dude, it's emergency room. We are going to the hospital, <laughs> no question about it. And uh, and I think that's just a great picture of us and God at times. It's like, God, I want this or God, I need this. Yeah. And God's going, man, if I give that to you, you're getting hurt. If I put that in your life, you're going to do some great damage with that. Yes. So I think, again, we we as sons and daughters of God, who is a loving father mm-hmm. and who only gives good gifts to his kids, yeah. we have to trust his wisdom. Mm-hmm. Like we can go and ask God for anything, which is is the great gift of prayer. Yeah. Um, but we have to realize that sometimes God is going to say no. Sometimes God is going to say not yet. And it does not matter what you do on the back end to try to convince him otherwise. Mm -hmm. He knows what you need better than you do. So I would just bring it. I know we're talking a lot about the why, but this is, this is really what matters. The motivation of fasting is not to get something from him. It's to get him. Yeah. So don't go into these next three weeks thinking, Ooh, maybe if I, (laughs) if I do a great job of fasting (laughs) these three weeks, that, that thing, God's finally going to do it for me. Just go into these three weeks, desiring him, desperate Mm -hmm. for him, wanting him, and I can guarantee you, he will give you that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that this is only a misconception if we go into it with any other expectation that we're going to get more of him. For sure. So if our if we're going into this saying, God, I want more of you, then yeah, he's going to give you what you want every time. That's exactly right. But if it's anything else, yeah. it's going to be, yeah, we're going to have to trust. Right, right. Yep. All right. Next one. All right. We got, we got two more. Okay. Um, so... Fasting will make God love me more. Yeah. I will earn more favor with God if I fast. Good old legalism, yep. baby. <laughs> uh, ne- neither of us are familiar with that, are no, we? No, not at Mike? all. Not at all. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that is legalism. Mm-hmm. Legalism is the idea that the more I do, the more God loves, the less I do, the less God loves, that his love and acceptance for me is dependent upon what I do or don't do. Mm-hmm. The opposite of that would be license. It yeah. doesn't matter what I do. Yeah, I can do anything, and because God is love, He's just going to be fine with it. <laughs> and uh, and both beliefs are completely unbiblical and anti-gospel. Mm-hmm. Okay, the gospel says that God loves me not because of what I do or don't do, but because of what Christ has done. Yeah, and this is the beauty of what we believe as Christians that. Our, lo- our acceptance and God's love for us depends 100% on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That I'm a son in God's family, you're a daughter in God's family, women who are listening, and, and it doesn't depend on you, you're standing before God. 
like Christ by his life, death, and resurrection accomplished all the necessary work for God to invite you in, forgive you of your sins, give you a new heart, new desires, put his spirit inside of you, mm-hmm. gift you with eternal life. Christ did all of that. Yeah. By faith, through grace, in Christ alone, we are saved. It's not a result of works so that no one will boast. So I'll say it like this, okay? You're never going to do anything in life that will make God love you more yeah. if you know Christ. And you're never going to do anything in life that will make God love you less yeah. because it's dependent upon Christ and not on you. And when you know that, that should motivate you toward holiness. Yeah. That should motivate you toward good works. It should not cause you to take advantage of the grace of God. Mm-hmm. Like, sweet, I'm loving accepted. I'll just go, you know, go out and live like hell and do what I want. And <laughs> if, if that's what you're doing, I don't know that you know Christ. <laughs> Because when you know him, the grace of God motivates you toward greater obedience. Mm-hmm. So again, going back to fasting along with the other disciplines, we do these things not to receive. We do these things in light of what we've already received. Yeah. And so this is a response. I, I don't fast to make God love me more. I fast because I'm already loved by God. Yeah. I, I don't fast in order to uh, earn favor from God. I fast because he's poured out favor into my life through his son, Jesus Christ. And so the grace of God motivates me Mm -hmm. to engage in disciplines like this so that I can know him more, so that the spirit of God can make me more like the one who gave his life for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the whole legalism thing, like throw that out, man. It's such (laughs) garbage. I I hate it. it. I despise it. It disgusts me, um, as a guy who had to battle against it for many years of my life. Uh, it is something that I'm passionate about battling against and preaching against in my ministry today. And I just think there's a lot of people, especially in our context, who are still so wrapped up in that legalistic mindset. Mm-hmm. And I believe it's a lie from the pits of hell. Yeah. So I think that that's such an important message that people need to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, because whether you grew up in legalism or not, I think we have a natural bend yeah. to say, okay, I need to earn this. For sure. Especially when you like you start really kind of appreciating the gravity. Like, yeah. you, you've kind of hit on that uh, earlier about just the, the gravity of what it means that salvation is available to us. Right. It's very difficult for us to accept the fact that we just have to accept it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's not just available. It's free. Right. Like through faith and repentance. Right. Um, but it's you don't have to do anything for it. Yeah, I think our brains have a really hard time with that, For whether sure. you grew up in legalism or not. Yeah. So understanding um, that we work from favor, not for favor. That's right. Is vitally important mm-hmm. for us to lock in the front of our brain because I, I, I think even you know we've been out of um, you know a legalistic type culture for twenty years. Yeah. Yep. Right. Same. And, there's yeah. still that stuff that kind of comes <laughs> up in the back of my brain. And then you yeah. just have to constantly keep squashing that down. Right, I think right. one of the secondary purposes you mentioned about fasting was to declare freedom. That's right. So, you know, again, like if you're listening to this episode right now, he's like, man, that's me. Like I constantly feel like I've got to make God like me. Yeah, yep. And maybe that's part of your fast this next 21 right. days to that's declare right. that freedom, Lord. I yeah. believe that you love me and nothing I can do is ever going to change right. that because of what Christ did for yeah. me. Um, and then at the tw- end of the 21 days, let's see how that goes. Yeah. Like if that's what they're struggling with right now. Yeah. Um, freedom from that, yeah. I can sp- tell you from experience, uh, it is almost as bad as the bondage of sin. Oh, for sure. Feeling like I constantly am not good enough. Yep. And that's I have exactly to do right. more and just exhausted. Yep. Okay. Next misconception. This is the last one. Last one. Yep. Uh, I only need to fast when my life is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Similar to prayer. It's super good. Yeah. <laughs> What's funny, man, I I uh, I thought about this and my mind went to the very last thing that I taught on prayer last week. I think the same advice would apply here. I do think there's a place for reactive fasting. Mm-hmm. So man, life is falling yeah. apart, really hard situation. I, I spoke yesterday about some categories, you know, when we were talking demonic oppression and yeah. how certain kinds can only be driven out by prayer and fasting. And and I just talked about certain issues that people are facing, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, mm-hmm. prodigal children, spouses who don't know Christ. Yeah. And, and part of me wonders, if some of those things might only be driven out by prayer and fasting. So 
I did. I, I called our people, hey, over the next 21 days, why don't we fast reactively, if you will, yeah. to those issues? And and maybe we'll see the spirit of God drive some of those things out. And, and I'm praying that he does. Yeah. So I think there's a place for that. But I would also say we need to fast proactively, Yeah, proactively. I think it would be helpful for all of us to just consider rhythms. Like what, what are some healthy rhythms for fasting? You know, maybe it's, I'm going to fast one day a week or I'm going to fast one day a month, or I, I don't know what it is. I think there's different ways to do it and, and we're free to do it as often as we want or not yeah. as often as we want. Um, but I think some healthy rhythms would be important going back to the primary purpose of fasting to mourn and to long, mm -hmm. knowing that when we do that, God rewards us by giving himself to us. So I think by prioritizing this practice, ultimately what it results in is deeper intimacy with the Lord. Yeah. So you don't have to wait on your life to blow up. <laughs> you don't have to wait on a really hard situation to arise. If you are someone that would simply say, I wanna know God more. Mm -hmm. I, I want my affections to be deepened. I, I want to. I want to be more desperate for Him. Man, fasting is a great way to bring that about in your life, in yeah. partnership with the Holy Spirit. So I would just say, if if you are someone who's desperate to grow, man, this is this is a great way to go about it. Yeah, yeah. So I think that, um, like this one specifically. So there's been a couple of these that have kind of hit home for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I was making the list. So like some of them was like, yeah, this is <laughs> right. So, you know, if you're, if you're experiencing some of these, you're not alone. Yeah. Half of these are mine. So um, I was going through some old notes and I found this, um, this great quote. Um, it was written by John Piper in his book, A Hunger for God. Yep, yep. Uh, and he's talking about um, how we get content right. with where we are spiritually, right? Uh, so I'm going to read the quote, and then I, I want to see what you think about this. He okay. says, you can't really long for something as intensely as the early church longed for Christ and not cry out to God. This is an absence of desire in the comfortable church of the prosperous West. Mm. Absence of fasting is indicative of our comfort with the way things are. No one fasts to express how content they are. Mm. People only fast out of dissatisfaction. Yeah. The absence of fasting is the measure of our contentment with the absence of Christ. Wow. So, all right, classic John Piper, right? You know, he's telling yeah, it like yeah, it yeah. is. But I was reading in um, Luke chapter six this morning, uh -huh. and you know, it's talking about you know, you, know, you build your house on the rock, and right? Builds a house on the sand. You know, we all know the song. Yep, yep. If you grew up in church, you know, <laughs> the rain comes and washes it away. Um, but like. Reading that and then reading this quote, it made me think like, you know, and we've talked about complacency and contentment because we have access and all these things. Yes. Um, but I think there's also this component where, you know, maybe we think our roots are deeper than they are. For sure. For sure. We've got, we've kind of content with where we are spiritually. Life's going pretty good. Not yeah. really experiencing a lot of problems. Yep, yep. Relationships are good. All this stuff's going on. We kind of get into this mindset that is like, okay, I think my roots are pretty deep, but then the storm comes. That's right. Yeah. And in that passage in Luke chapter six, you know, the storm came for both men. That's right. For both homes, the storm came, but the guy who built on the rock was ready for it. Right. Right. And the guy who didn't wasn't. Right. right. So when we when we're approaching this idea of fasting, yeah, uh, and whether or not we should be doing it reactively or proactively. Yeah. I think the answer is yes. Absolutely. Both and not either yeah. or, right? When what you just read from Piper, it, it reminds me of something that C.S. Lewis talked about. Mm -hmm. And he, he said that for most of us, the problem is not that our desires for the things of this world are too strong. It's that our desires yeah. for God are too weak. Yeah, That'll preach all day. It's like the only reason I would go and look for satisfaction in other things is because I am not finding it in the one who satisfies. Yeah. And so when my desires for him are too weak, of course, I'm going to walk out on, on him and, and, and try to seek in other things what only he provides. So I think by, by stirring up our affections for the Lord on a daily basis through things like prayer and fasting, mm -hmm. we start to see the world more clearly. And we start to see the reality of sin more clearly. Yeah. And those things start to look pretty disgusting and strange mm -hmm. and undesirable in light of who we know God to be. 
This is one of the reasons I always tell people, preach the gospel to yourself every day. Because the more beauty you see in Christ, the more disgusting sin starts to look. Yeah. And the more satisfied you are in Christ, the less you want to nibble at the table of the world, right? Yeah. Piper uses that same language in that same <laughs> book, A Hunger for God. Um, so I think, I think seasons like this are so important mm -hmm. because we're setting out to intentionally stir up our affections for the Lord. Yeah. But back to the question, you don't need to wait on seasons to do that. You can do that every day of the week. Yeah. You can build rhythms into your life so that you're doing this on a regular basis. And uh, I, I would encourage you to make fasting just a regular part of that rhythm. So I think that when we're doing it proactively, doing it reactively starts getting fewer and far between. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Because we're doing the work on the front end. That's right. All right, are you ready to get a little personal? Yeah, let's go. All right, so as we're gonna close this out, okay. with talking about kind of our personal experiences okay. with fasting. Yep, yep. Again, I thought it would yep. be helpful people listening. Yeah. Yep. Uh, like this isn't um, some theoretical thing that, you know, we're not experiencing in our own lives. Like yeah. we kind of struggle. We have the same struggles. We have the same issues. We, yeah. we both still get hungry. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, yep. We're not yep. like professional fasters. There's still <laughs> issues, right? Um, so let's, um, let's start with, um, in your sermon, you talked about um, a handful of ways yeah. to fast, the yeah. absolute, the normal. And yeah. the partial. So, yeah. what's your what's your go to? Do you yeah. kind of like rotate through them? Is got there it, one it. that you do every yeah. time? How do you yeah, do yeah. it? Yeah, great question. Um, and I'll I'll start by just being very honest, vulnerable, and transparent. Okay, love it. I got to be honest, man. When I was writing this sermon this past week, I was super convicted. Yeah, personally, mm -hmm. I have often told people that God has to preach these sermons to me before I can preach them to anybody else. And this was very true of this one. It's crazy, man. I've been preaching since I was 19 years old. I'm 41, mm -hmm. so what, 22 years. And I've talked about fasting in sermons, but in 21 years of preaching, I have never preached a sermon on fasting like yeah. I did this weekend, okay? So number one, that was a little convicting. Like, I don't know why, but I just haven't. Yeah. And then secondly, I realized in writing this sermon that I have neglected this discipline personally. Yeah. Um, I have been the guy that have, I, I've waited on seasons instead of just building rhythms into my life. Um, I've, I've put this one on the back burner, you know. I'm, I'm really great about some other ones. Yeah. I mean, my gosh, I'm a Bible preacher and teacher, so I spend a lot of time in the Word, <laughs> studying the Word, meditating on the Word. Yeah. I love worship music. Mm -hmm. I just love it. And so there's a lot of times, man, where I'm just worshiping on my personal time alone, nobody else around. Like there's some that I'm great. This one I have not been great about. Yeah. I have not. And as I was writing this sermon and just considering all the benefits of this great gift, it was like God was just pushing into me like, hey, dummy, um, you, you need to pay attention here. Yeah. And and this needs to be something that you incorporate more proactively into your life. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm challenged to do that moving forward. But to answer the question, I will say I have had the most experience, the most experience with partial and non-food fast, okay? Mm -hmm. So over the past several years, when I have done this, um, I've done Daniel fast. I've restricted my diet in some pretty significant ways. Um, I have done sun up to sundown or extended periods of fasting throughout the day. Mm -hmm. That's been most of my experience. And then the non-food fast, I, I always during this season turn off social media, mm -hmm. limit my time on TV, stuff yeah. like that. I don't know if anybody else is like this. I, I even yesterday, so this is how ridiculous it is, okay? Again, this is me being honest. Yesterday, I, you know, I delete all my social media apps off of my phone. Yesterday, I get home from church, man, I'm tired, I'm sitting on my couch, I'm watching the Bills Dolphins game. <laughs> and I found, I found myself a couple times just mindlessly picking up my phone. I've never done that before. Scrolling <laughs> over to where my social media apps were, clicking where the icon was, and I'm opening a different app because it's not there anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, it's like, Bill, I've conditioned myself. Yeah. And, and what I realize is, dude, I waste so much time on that. Mm -hmm. Just scrolling Instagram or Facebook, watching stupid videos, and 30 minutes later, it's like, well, I'll never get that time back in my life. <laughs> And so I told my wife last night at dinner, we were sitting talking about the fast and I was talking to my daughters about the fast and you know what's going on in our house and what it all means. And I just told my wife, I said, my gosh, after, after not even a day of not being on social media, like 
my mind and soul feels significantly better already. Yeah. So I always encourage people during seasons like this to turn that off. And, and I usually leave mine off for way longer than 21 days, which I'll, I'll probably do again. But, you know, the approach I'm taking this year, I am going to do a combination of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually recording this podcast a day early yeah, because I'm getting on a plane tomorrow, Tuesday, and I am flying out to San Diego for the week for a pastor's group that I'm a part of. So suffering for Jesus in Southern California the next yeah. few days. But, uh, but this week, the plan is to do sun up to sundown, mm -hmm. um, just to, I felt like that was a little more logical while I'm on the road traveling. There's some dinners I got to be at. Yeah. Next week, when I get back, I'm going to transition more into a Daniel type fast. Mm -hmm. And then my plan toward the end of the 21 days is to transition to a complete fast yeah. where I would still drink water and juices and fast entirely from food. Mm -hmm. I know I definitely want to do that. Uh, throughout the revival nights, like those days. Yeah. So that's my plan this year. I'm yeah. trying to take the advice I gave yesterday, just easing in a little bit, you know? <laughs> but uh, but by the end, I'm I'm planning to go complete fast all the way. Yeah. Yep. So if you heard the sermon and you think nobody's eating food for 21 days, yeah. you can rest easy. <laughs> <laughs> there are some options. There are there. options. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, so just to kind of piggyback on some of the stuff you shared, you know, this is referred to as the neglected discipline for a reason. Yeah. Right. So it's not like pastors and ministers and ordained people have never had a problem with this. Correct. You know, I would say that a lot of us, yep. you know, and myself included, um, going through this kind of like, you know, I'd been in ministry for, you know, three or four years before I even considered Right, fasting, and I waited till my life was falling apart. So <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the reactive that stuff. reactive fast. That's uh, right. So I, I think it's really common. Yeah, that you know, a lot of us don't really have a lot of experience. And I think that you know, we're talking about misconceptions. We're talking about all this stuff. You know, it, it's there for a reason because we don't do this on a regular basis. Right, right. So I'm there with you. So let's um, let's talk about when you fasted for the first okay. time. Yeah, love that. So the first time you ever did it. Yep. How did it go? Ah, uh, man, it was hard. Uh, this was several years ago. Yeah. And um, when I say, you know, it's a challenge, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a food guy. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty active. I love to work out. And, and because of that, I eat a lot of food. <laughs> One of my good buddies on staff, uh, he always jokes that I have a tapeworm, you know, yeah. Brad Chandler, our location pastor in Cartersville. And he always asks me, have you fed your tapeworm today? So I, I do. I try to feed it seven times a day. So, so I remember when I, when, I hadn't been on staff long. <laughs> okay. And I was in the uh, the resource room getting a cup of coffee and we had like the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come in there. Yep. I think you had your AirPods. It was like sermon prep day. So yeah, you were yeah. kind of, you were like locked in and you just grabbed this huge, massive pile of lunch meat. <laughs> <laughs> and you just take a bite out of it and yeah. walk out. And I just remember, that's kind of odd, but okay. I mean, it likes lunch meat. That's cool. Oh, hey, you got to get it in, man. Got to get it in. Got to fuel the body, but that's too funny. You're telling on me, but yeah, I do. Yeah, lunch meat, tuna, whatever it takes. But but seriously, I eat seven seven times a day. Yeah. You know, I start at breakfast and then I probably eat my last meal around nine o'clock at night, just like, like a hobbit, like a pre bedtime <laughs> snack. Yeah, man. And, and so saying no to food for me, like I, I really feel it. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that first fast that I ever did. Like I, man, I felt it right away. Yeah. The physical effects. I mean, it was obviously hunger pains, but it was like, I just remember times like I would get the shakes, like my body, it was like withdrawal symptoms is yeah. super weird. Uh, definitely experienced fatigue and dizziness and, and headaches along the way. I remember my performance in the gym was just garbage. It's like I was dying, man. Shocking. All my strength <laughs> went away. I mean, it, you know, it is what it is, but, yeah. but it was a challenge. It really, really was. And so I would go back to yesterday's advice and just say to everyone, the first three days, no matter what fast you, you choose, the first three days are probably going to be the hardest because it yeah. is a shock to your body. I think your body's screaming at you, like, what What are you doing? You know, it's it's used to getting certain things at certain times. And mm -hmm. when you take that away, it's going to let you know about it. But if you can push through until day four, yeah. you'll feel yourself start to turn a corner. So so don't give up. Be diligent in prayer. You know, I just yesterday, man, I'll, I'll say this, just yesterday, it was the first day of the fast. And, and when I preach, I, I usually come to my office 
and I sit down for five or 10 minutes between gatherings and I eat a snack just to refuel my body. And I didn't do that yesterday. And I was feeling it going into that second yeah. sermon, okay? And so I just stood there in the gathering as we were singing and I prayed, God, would you strengthen me in a way that a protein bar can't? Yeah. That was literally my specific prayer. <laughs> I need it. It's like, God, <laughs> I need you to give me supernatural strength, mental clarity, energy to get through this. And would you provide a strength for me that a protein mm -hmm. bar can't? Yeah. And he did. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of, of fasting is if you will pursue the presence of the Lord and ask him for what you need, he'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said at Matthew 4, 4, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He will sustain, he will nourish, and he will do it in a way that food can't. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember the first time I fasted. Yep. Um, so you said start slow. Yeah. I had a lot, of, a lot of other men in my life. You went for that it. That said start slow, and I said that's weak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, need to start slow. I'm doing a three-day absolute fast, nothing but water and juice. Yep. Um, and I think the only thing I did right was not eat food. <laughs> so I was um, like lethargic. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you can ask Jessica. Yeah. Like I've, and it, I did it on time. You know, it was over the weekend, so I was off work, so I didn't right, have to right. worry about work. Um, but I, I swear, I just laid around on the couch for three days because yeah. I was so hungry and like I couldn't think. I could like process thought. Like you know, yeah. my mind. It was like my mind was buffering the right, entire right. time. So I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't in the word. I wasn't praying. I wasn't doing anything. I was only abstaining from the food. Right, right, right. Thinking, <laughs> Lord, when will this be over? <laughs> like, you know, I just, I completely messed it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was yeah. doing it like 100% wrong. Yeah. Now, I will say, though, when I had that first meal and I had that first quiet time, like, man, my mind was going a <laughs> hundred miles. Like, bring on some math equations. I can think again. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't the point of the fast. Like, right. I should have been experiencing that during it, but yeah. I had completely neglected for sure any type of prayer or for time sure. in the Word or any yeah. of that kind yep, of stuff. Yep. So I, I just made myself miserable for yeah. three days. This was Suffered essentially it for all nothing. I did, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, that was one of the mistakes. Um, that I had made, and yeah. then I, and again, I don't do this enough, so don't don't hear this like I'm doing this on a regular basis, and I've got it figured out. But the yeah. partial fast, yeah, I yeah. think has been kind of my yeah. sweet spot, right, right, where it's like a sun up to sundown yeah. deal, where I skip breakfast and lunch, and then we break right. the fast at dinner time, right, right, yeah. Um, and doing that more often has been yeah. um, a little bit more productive, yeah, yeah, for us, yep. Yeah. I love that. All right, so let's, and we've kind of. We've kind of danced around this a little bit, but yeah. let's just go ahead and ask the question. How did I get through it? How did you get through it without <laughs> eating food, yeah. right? Because, you know, we, and again, yeah. I say we've danced around that. We've talked about it a little bit, but let's just specifically yeah. address this. Yep, yep. No, How I, do I do it without eating? I love eating? that. Yep, I'll, I'll keep it really simple, practical. So I start the day in prayer and reading. Mm -hmm. And so this is a good reason to, I think, to turn off social media. Yeah and to maybe delete the news app off your phone or whatever. I think for a lot of us, you know, the tendency, because we all now have smartphones, is like, I wake up and immediately I'm on that thing, opening the, yeah. <laughs> all right, what's going on in people's yeah. lives and in the world? And I and just if, need to wake up. That's the lie I tell myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, need I need blue light in my <laughs> face, right? And so if you will shut that off, yeah. I think it, it becomes easier to go, okay, no distractions. I'm going to start the day seeking the Lord in his word and in prayer. And so that's how I started. Mm -hmm. I'm going to seek the Lord in those ways, and I'm going to ask God for strength to get through today. Yeah. Okay, God, what, what I'm not going to get from food, will you provide that for me? Mm -hmm. So that's where I would start. And then all throughout the day, I would let my hunger pains be my cue to pray. Yeah. So when my body's just screaming at me. <laughs> and it will scream at it you. It will scream at me. <laughs> um okay, Lord, I need you. I need you. And it, and even at times it wasn't just like, Lord, I need you, but it's like, Hey, I know some other people who need you and would you do this for them? Or it's like, okay, Lord, the pain that I feel, I, I want to stop and just be mindful of the pain that people are experiencing in our world. Yeah. I, so you take those moments, like you're, you're feeling it. Mm -hmm. And so now you express it. God, the world's broken. People are broken. I know people 
who are suffering in certain ways. And you, you just let those hunger cues be, uh, or pains, excuse me, be your cues to pray in very, very specific ways. And you pray over whatever God puts on your heart in that moment. And so this again is, is what I would do. I would just repurpose the time that I would normally spend, you know, stuff in my face, <laughs> pursuing the presence of, Lord, of the Lord, talking to him, reading the word, meditating on the scriptures. And I will say what I found, and I think this will get us into the final part of the, the conversation, but what I found is that God's presence truly is enough. Mm-hmm. Like when I prioritize his presence, his presence is enough to get me through the day. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing that, that you'll never know until you experience it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's what I say about like generosity. You never know the joy of giving until you actually give. Yeah. I can try to convince you of it, but until you're actually a generous person, you're not gonna know that generosity leads to joy. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that fasting in a very unique way deepens your intimacy with the Lord, but until you fast, you'll never experience that. Yeah. So I think that, I think that what I hear you saying is that you can get through it on sheer willpower. For sure. It is possible. Yeah. My three-day fast is proof of that. Right. <laughs> I was determined not to eat, so I didn't. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, But you're going to get to the end of it disappointed. Yeah. You know, the whole point of this is to express our dependence. That's it. On the Lord. Well, here's the reality. Yeah, you, you can... You can use stubbornness to get yourself through. <laughs> Dig your heels in. Or you can allow the Spirit of God to carry you through. Yeah. And I think the latter is by far the better option. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right. What were some of your big takeaways? Okay. So not maybe not maybe not a specific fast that you did, yeah, but yeah. just like just In the general. idea of fasting, yeah. your experience yeah, yeah, with yeah. fasting. Yeah. What were some of your big takeaways through the process? Yeah, I'll go back to some categories from yesterday. Um, nourishment. Mm-hmm. It, it just kind of goes back to what I just said about the presence of God. You know, I think fasting has increased my awareness of God's presence as I have fasted at, at certain times, which again is why I was convicted that I need to do this more, yeah. more regularly, more proactively. Uh, I can honestly say that in seasons of fasting, I have experienced more joy, more contentment, more satisfaction, less frustration, mm-hmm. less anger, less impatience. Yeah. It's pretty incredible when you lay your life before the Lord in this way, what he does in you. Yeah. So spiritual nourishment is is the first. Secondly, uh, going back to what I said about freedom, you know, it's obviously, fasting is obviously a way we declare it, but it's also how we experience it. And I think through fasting, I have experienced freedom. Mm-hmm. It's interesting as people, there's so many things we think we can't live without. And then fasting forces us to live without them. And we start to realize I can live without that. Yeah. I don't have to be online all the time. I don't have to be buried in Netflix. I don't, I don't need that food item or those meals in my life. I can do without that. Yeah. And God is enough. And so I think, yes, declare your freedom through this practice. But again, when you practice it, you get to experience the freedom that you're declaring. And it's so life-giving. Mm-hmm. And it just reminds you, man, that, that gosh, man, as Americans, we have way more than we need. <laughs> There, there's so much we could live without and do without. And that's yeah. just the truth. And then finally, I would say resistance. Um, I remember a few years ago, this is when we were still in in the other facility in downtown Cartersville, the House of Rock. Yeah. It's before we moved. Gosh, so it was probably 2016, 2017, something like that. We were doing a big fast with our church. And we were meeting at the church each morning for prayer, like 6 a.m., Okay. We haven't done that in a few years because not a lot of people apparently wanted to get up and <laughs> come at 6 a.m. to pray. But I just remember I was in the front of the room one morning and and I was praying over this besetting sin in my life, this mm-hmm. temptation issue that that's just been around for a long time for yeah. me. It's, a, it's kind of a generational thing. It runs all throughout my family, especially my dad's side of the family. And I just remember sitting there one morning and I'm praying, God, take it away, take it away, take it away, like I have for years and years and years. And God brought to mind 2 Corinthians 12, yeah. where Paul was praying a very similar prayer about this thorn in his flesh. Yeah. I have no idea what it was. Nobody does, but he was praying, God, take it away, take it away, take it away. Yeah. Three different seasons of his life, God, take it away. And God said to Paul, I'm not going to take it away. My grace will be sufficient for you. Yeah. And then Paul goes on to say, I will boast all the more gladly in my weakness mm-hmm. because I know that when I'm weak, I'm strong. Yeah. 
that when I'm weak, the power of Christ rests upon me. And in that moment, it was like God spoke to me so clearly. Hey, man, I'm, I'm leaving this in your life to force you to depend upon me in ways that you otherwise wouldn't. Yeah. And so this area of weakness is actually a gift from me. Because in remaining weak in that way, you're actually strong. Yeah. In remaining weak in that way, the power of Christ is going to rest upon you. And so I started from that moment on considering that temptation in my life that God wouldn't take away. I've started seeing it not as a burden, but as a blessing, yeah. as a gift of God in my life, because it is something that keeps me on my knees, something that keeps me dependent upon him. Yeah. And by remaining dependent upon him, I'm able to resist the enemy. Mm -hmm. And so I, it was fasting that brought about that realization and, and it's empowered me to resist the enemy in ways that that man, I desperately need, and we all do. Yeah, yeah, that's good. All right, so let's we're gonna we're gonna land this plane. Love that. So you've already you've offered some advice, okay, about how to get so get started slow. Yeah, yeah. What was the other? There's two more. Yeah, start slow. It's it's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be a challenge. And remember why you're doing it. Okay. That God rewards those who seek Him in this way. You get Him. So is there any other? little tidbits that you'd like to offer. So like, this is someone that's like, okay, I'm in. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Yeah. It's my first time. Okay. I've never done it before. Yeah. Anything, any other advice you would offer yeah. to that yeah. person? Yeah. I think I would say lean on other people mm -hmm. throughout the season. This is, I mean, we talk about community all the time here at Cross Point and the importance of community and, and being in relationship with other believers in Christ. And I would just say too, don't try to walk through this alone. Mm-hmm. Like, like pull some brothers and sisters in around you and, uh, and let them know, hey, here, here's what I'm fasting from. Here's how I'm doing this. Pray with me. Pray for me. You know, have some folks that you can text when it gets hard mm -hmm. so that they can speak life and encouragement into to you. I think there's great power in us doing this together. Yeah. And this is why as a church, this is, this is a corporate endeavor. So you're not alone in this. And if you need to call on some other people to find encouragement as you walk through the next three weeks... Man, do that. Yeah. Do that. It's the beauty of being a part of the church. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I think the the one thing I would say too is to make sure you have a plan. Yeah. So this is my checklist brain. Yeah. Because <laughs> I've also gone into this, or not necessarily this, but other things like Sabbath rest and that kind of stuff with not really having much of a plan, just like, okay, we're going to rest. And then yeah, yeah, just yeah. kind of end up sitting around all day and not really doing anything, which right, right. wasn't really rest. Yeah. Um, so, you know, regardless of the type of fast that you're going to do, figure out what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and then make the preparations before the fast starts. For sure. So don't do a, uh, you're, you're going to do juice and water yeah, and then have enough juice and water to get halfway through and then you got to go to the grocery <laughs> store when like your stomach is trying to punch yeah, you yeah, <laughs> to yeah, get yeah, you to yeah, eat, yeah, right? Yeah. So like make that plan ahead of time, whatever you're going to do, and then map that thing out so yep. that you, you're avoiding certain temptations because... If you're doing an absolute fast and you end up in the grocery store, that you've made a huge mistake. Yeah. So make a plan. Yeah, that's when you. Uh, that's when you got to in Instacart that baby, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to um, wrap it up today. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back next week. We're going to be talking about worship. That's right. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any questions about the sermon um, from the weekend or the past of scripture or just in theology in general, you can submit those questions to us. Uh, you can uh, direct message us on your face, favorite social media platforms. You can contact us by uh, texting the word question to 22722. Uh, or you can email us directly with uh, the questions that you have from what we're discussing, what we're talking about. If you'd like more information about our church or this podcast, you can check out our website at crosspointcity.com or on your favorite social media platforms. Uh, but until next week, know that we're here for you. And we love you.